A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, realize that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless and blemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified yourselves by obedience to the truth for sincere brotherly love, love one another intensely from a pure heart. You have been born anew, not from perishable, but from imperishable seed through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like the flower of the field. The grass withers and the flower wilts, but the word of the Lord remains forever. This is the word that has been proclaimed to you. Responsorial Psalm Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his commands to the earth. Swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The disciples were on the way going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus went ahead of them. They were amazed, and those who followed were afraid. Taking the twelve aside again, he began to tell them what was going to happen to him. Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be handed over to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and hand him over to the Gentiles, who will mock him, spit on him, scourge him, and put him to death. But after three days he will rise. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He replied, What do you wish me to do for you? They answered, Grant that in your glory we may sit one at your right and the other at your left. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Can you drink the chalice that I drink or baptize with the baptism with which I am baptized? They said to him, We can. Jesus said to them, The chalice that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to give. But this is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they became indignant at James and John. Jesus summoned them and said to them, You know that those who are recognized as rules over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, Whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. 
For the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus called himself the Son of Man, both to identify himself with other human condition, subjected to pain and death, and with his divine mission to restore the world to the glory of God, had intended to the glory God had intended from the beginning of creation. In Jesus' time, the Jewish people were looking for a Messiah who would set them free from the oppressive rule of Rome. Jesus came to set people free from the worst oppression of all, the tyranny of endless slavery to sin, Satan, and death. Jesus came to bring us into a new covenant relationship with God that would not end with death but lead to everlasting peace, joy, and abundant life. Why did Jesus freely and willingly lay down his life for us? Did not God promise that his anointed one would deliver his people from their oppression and establish a kingdom of peace and justice. The prophet Isaiah had foretold that it was God's will that the suffering servant make atonement for sins through his suffering and death. Jesus paid the price for our redemption with his blood. The ransom Jesus paid sets us free from the worst tyranny possible, the tyranny of sin and fear of death. Jesus' victory did not end with death, but triumph over the tomb when he rose again on the third day. A follower of Jesus must be ready to lay down his or her life in martyrdom and be ready to lay it down each and every day in the little and big sacrifices required. An early church father summed up Jesus' teaching with the expression, To serve is to reign with Christ. We share in God's reign by laying down our lives in humble service, as Jesus did for our sake. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, your death brought life and freedom. Make me a servant of your love that I may seek to serve rather than be served and share in your victory over sin, suffering, and death. Amen.